In this problem, we have a first order system of ODEs where the dash just means uh, the regular derivative, dx dt. A is a two by two matrix just with um, real entries. And we're asked to solve this system. Now, the way uh, we're going to solve it is to calculate the eigenvalues of A, the corresponding eigenvectors, and um, uh, then we can write down, it turns out we can write down the general form of the solution to this problem. Now, you can kind of think of this as two simultaneous ODEs. x1 prime equals 1x1 plus 2x2. And the second equation would be x2 prime equals 2x1 plus 4x2. So it's like an interlaced system of, of problems. Now, you might think, well, OK, what, what are some of the applications of these general systems? Well, um, you may have heard of predator-prey systems. And, and the, the idea is to model uh, the system and solve the problems to see what happens with both populations. OK? So let's calculate the eigenvalues of A and the corresponding eigenvectors of A. Now, by these two vertical lines, I'm not, I'm not talking about absolute value there. I'm talking about the determinant of the matrix A minus lambda I, where I is the identity matrix. OK, so we're looking for the, the values of lambda such that this determinant is 0. So a, if that's my matrix A, A minus lambda I it's just going to be 1 minus lambda, 4 minus lambda, just basically down the diagonals. OK, so I want to set that equal to 0. And find the values of lambda that satisfy the bottom line. OK, so if we expand the determinant, that times that minus that times that, And if I simplify the algebra there and factorize, I'll end up with the following. So you can see essentially I've got a polynomial equation, a quadratic equation, that factorizes nicely. And I'm, uh, I can conclude that lambda equals 0 or lambda equals positive 5. OK? So they're my eigenvalues for the matrix A. Let's go and determine the eigenvectors, the corresponding eigenvectors. OK, so we treat each case separately. We consider the bottom line for lambda equals 0, and find an a eigenvector v satisfying that. And then we consider the case lambda equals 5 separately, and find an eigenvector corresponding to that eigenvalue. OK, so this then, a minus lambda i with lambda equals 0, it's just going to be basically the same matrix that we started with just the matrix A. So this system then is the following. So what we want to do is come up with values for V1 and V2. Now you can see the first, basically the first line gives you 1V1 plus 2V2 equals 0. And the second line gives you 2V1 plus 4V2 equals 0. So essentially they're the, the, essentially they're the same equation.
Okay, so now we, we notice, okay, well, lots of V1s and V2s will satisfy that bottom right-hand corner. So let's just choose a simple value for one of them, and we can get a value for the other one. So here I've chosen V, uh, so basically V1 equals negative 2V2. Okay, so um, essentially I've chosen V2 to be 1, so V1 will be negative 2. So an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda equals 1 will be something like this. And of course you can have any multiple of that eigen, uh, eigenvector. That will also be an eigenvector. Okay, so let's uh, look at the case lambda equals 5 now. So you want to go back and solve this equation for the eigenvector v corresponding to this value of lambda. So when lambda equals 5, down the diagonal I'm going to have minus 4 and minus 1. So I now want to come up with values for V1 and V2 in the system here. So you can see the first line is going to give me minus 4 V1 plus 2 V2 equals 0. The bottom line is going to give me 2 V1 minus uh, V2 equals 0. So the bottom line or the bottom row is going to be something like 2 V1 equals V2. Okay, well, let's choose a simple value for one of these things. Let's choose V1 equals 1. So V2 will be 2. So the eigenvector uh, in this case will be 1, 2. Okay, so we've spent, a, we've spent a fair bit of time really uh, calculating these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Let's actually apply them now, and we can um, essentially write down the solution to our original system. So this is, I guess this is part three. So let's call this star. Okay, so I'm just going to go back and write this as the vector v1 and this is the vector v2 just so I can you know, use this uh, expression here. c1 and c2 are any constants. Okay? Now we get e to the 0t because lambda equals 0 in the first case. So essentially, I'm just going to get the following. So e to the 0 t is just 1. Now, there is one extra step that you should check regarding linear independence. Okay, so essentially we've shown that 
this is a solution to the problem. This is a solution to the problem. So are the two solutions linear, linearly independent? Well, essentially what you can do is write the two, sort of, so forget that, write, bring this in here, write the two vectors as a matrix, and then calculate the determinant of the matrix. Okay, it's like a Ronskian, but for systems. Okay? If it's non-zero, then the two solutions are linearly independent. Okay, so to see this, what you would do so what I've done, I've taken that and I've moved that in there and just written that as a um, as a vector. So, if you look at the determinant, the determinant's non-zero. 